morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Unity of Joplin. Welcome to our friends in Facebook land. We are glad to have you. And I'll take this opportunity really quickly. Speaking of Facebook land and our social media, if you would take out your phones, like our page, Unity of Joplin, share today's service with your friends. It lets the community and the world know the good that's happening here. And then you can silence your phones, all right? My name is Ann Leach. I'm the platform person. Ser uh, service steward is our new official term, and we are so grateful that you are here. This is an opportunity to kind of refuel for the week ahead, right? And we're delighted to do that today with our guest speaker, Arlie Spradley, who is a licensed Unity teacher and a familiar friend and member of this church. And uh, before we get into all the good stuff, though, let's just come together and sing our opening hymn, Surely the Presence. And you can stand. In the midst of God's children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many, it can be just two or three. And I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt oft times before. I can say I've been with the Lord Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace I can feel the brush of angel wings I see the glory on the face Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place presence is within us and all around us. And we give thanks that we've come together this morning to give thanks and praise to that presence that is within. We call it forth now perfect order for this service from the music to your ears, to the people online, and everyone who steps up through this way. And we give thanks for it, and we know it's perfect, and it's all good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Arlise. Uh, we will now enjoy more music as we share our congregational song. Now let the vault of heaven resound. Should we stand up for this too? Yeah, yeah okay, we can do it. <laughs> Yeah. 
proud and clear. We beat their songs at glory. Also, Cadence here. As usual, what would we do without you? <laughs> Thanks for being here. Ably assisted today by Michelle. Thanks, Michelle, for jumping in. And of course, you've met our Lise, who will give our lesson and meditation. But right now, let's just settle into our seats as we share our statement of faith. If you will read it with me. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. And our mission statement. Our mission is to inspire, encourage, and affirm divine freedom within each other. And the wonderful vision, Unity of Joplin is a vibrant, progressive, spiritual movement where all are welcome as we co-create a world that works for all. Thank you. We are in the process of preparing to move to our next right and perfect home. And each night at 8 p.m., we are affirming this together. So let's do it now and give some extra energy to this uh, response. The next owners of this beautiful building are ready to purchase in this now moment. We are ready to move. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And our inspiration for the day is Janet. Okay. Well, that's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Our word for today is prayer. And our affirmation is, I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. Would you repeat that with me? I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. In the revealing word, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore described prayer as the most highly accelerated mind action known. This awareness is my comfort and assurance as I release my worldly concerns and feel the presence of God. As I pray, I immerse myself in the silence so I can be still and know. From this place of deep communion, I relax and focus my attention on the divine ideas of life, love, wisdom, strength, and order, which are always mine to claim. As these spiritual truths flourish in my consciousness, thoughts of my troubles and worries fade from my mind. In the past, I may have believed prayer was a way of asking God for help and solace. Now I understand it is as one of the best ways of helping and uplifting myself. This is open to all of us. In Psalm 46.10, we are told, Be still and know that I am God. And again, our affirmation for today is, I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. Together, I feel the presence and power of God as I pray.
and for Rachel, much more. <laughs> I miss that part. <laughs> she does that so well. <laughs> so let's dedicate these gifts. These ties and offerings are dedicated to the will and work of spirit through unity of Joplin and for the highest good of all. Thank you, God. We will now prepare ourselves for a time of meditation led by Arlise, followed by some special music, and then we'll move into our lesson with Arlise. <laughs> Let us start our meditation just knowing God's presence is everywhere presence within us and around us. Let's take in a deep breath. And exhale, letting go of all the busyness of the morning that it takes to get here. Let go of any tension you might be holding and breathe in deeply. Let your shoulders drop. Put your feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. And just know right where you are Realize you are in the presence of pure spirit. Breathe it in. And let it go. Breathe it in and know that you are safe, protected, and aware of that presence. That one presence is everywhere evenly present. And we recognize that we are one in the allness of that presence. And we take this awareness gently into the silence. And we rest in the silence. And as we return our attention, 
for this place and time. Let us bring the peace, the love, the wisdom, and the strength of God, knowing the allness is within us and in this very service, with us and as us. Amen and amen. Until we meet again, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And until we meet again, until Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. That was lovely. Being held in the palm of God's hand. That's a very intimate position. Ah, good morning. <laughs> it is my joy to be here with you this morning during this Lenten time. Have you all been studying the Let Go, Let God book? Everybody has one? 
Anybody who doesn't? You still have some. Okay, so don't leave here without it. It's, it's a wonderful guide through this process. It's all about letting go of what human items and emotions we have allowed to be in our focus when who we really are is the presence and power of God. Sometimes we cover it up, you know. Week by week in this little book, we have taken a look at the life of Jesus Christ. When I was a little girl, I thought Christ was his last name. But I learned differently, and I'm glad to know that that Christ presence is in each and every one of us. And that's the part we're uncovering as we let go. But we took a look at, in the first week, the human ego. There was a lot packed in that one. We took a look at the, his way of dealing with the approval of others. How many times do we work around and lower our heads and try not to get on the wrong side of somebody, especially someone in authority or someone who we think is in authority? On the third week, we let go of worry. And that's something every single one of us knows about. Worrying about something, our kids, our spouse, our job, money, all kind of stuff. Let it go. Let it go. This is just, you know, if you just repeat those words, let go, let God, you'd make it through a lot. Last week was a biggie for me. It was about letting go of fear. And you wouldn't think about it. I'm not under duress or anything. There's no st really stressful positions in my life, but there are a lot of little fears that we let cloud our vision or capture our vision is a better way of saying it because stuff is happening, but it depends on where we place our focus. So this is the fifth Sunday. And I have a question for you. In this fifth Sunday of Lent, I wonder if you've ever been in a discussion with another person and knew that you were right in this discussion. How well did you handle their opposition? Makes you really want to Get your point across. You know you're right. This week, we're following Jesus as he lets go of being right. As he demonstrated letting go, we realized it was a time that he was being accused of a great many things by many people. He was being questioned by the government, Pilate and Herod and back to Pilate, all, just everyone was against him. Even the religious people had a problem with him because he didn't want them to make people pay for burnt offerings, to get an offering to be relieved of their sins. He felt like that was a bit of cowardice. And even the soldiers that were making fun of him and treating him like a criminal before he even had a trial. In these days, we treat our criminals pretty well until the trial comes, whenever that may be. And he could have tried to explain. 
He could have tried to tell them where he saw it differently, but he didn't waste his energy on that. Jesus kept his focus on that one presence and the one power within himself. And sometimes that's difficult to do, especially when you know you write. But during this week, we'll be walking through some of the ways that he showed us. He didn't try to elevate himself, even though he had showed, he demonstrated by just a touch of hand, the power of healing that was within him. He demonstrated by saying a word to a man whose servant needed to be healed. He demonstrated the power of God that worked through him. That same power is in you. That same power is within you. So do you feel like you have to argue with someone to prove that you're right? Or will you know that you know and live your life? One of the first ways that we're looking at is letting go of chaos. I understood that with all the swirling opinions during this presidential year, and this election, and all of the drama around that, it seems to me that many people just love the drama. They just love to get riled up and argue with one another. But what is that doing to your inner person? What is that doing to your spirit? Scripture says, Christ in you, your hope of glory. Can you let go of the chaos? Would you be willing to see the humanness in another person? You might know in your mind that it's, you've got the right I've got it right, but do you have to put your rightness on someone else? Can you allow that they may see it a different way? Can you recognize that you too have the power to choose and let go of the chaos? The law works just like this. What you hold on to multiplies. Now, if you want to hold on to an argument, if you want to hold on to hurt feelings, if you want to hold on to putting down someone because they got it all wrong, What's going to be multiplied in your life? And is that what you want in your life? Or we can choose to let go of chaos and shift your focus. Well, what, what would you prefer to look like? What would you prefer to have as your life outcome? Anybody need a little more wisdom? How about just more love in your life? Another part of scripture that I really enjoy is the instructions that we were given on how to really live a life that we could love the return. It's to love God with all your heart with all your understanding, and with all your strength. 
Now, sometimes that's not too hard, loving yourself. But the next part of that says, love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> love your neighbor, regardless if they're right or wrong in the argument, regardless if they cut down your cherry tree or whatever disagreement you might have. Can you still love them? Stuff happens. We've all done some things that we probably weren't very proud of, or if we were, it could have been damaging to someone else. So we're invited to not only see it right, but recognize that allowing it in our lives that we be it, that we be it. So I love this little book I ran across. And what is it? Did I have it? Got it. Nope. I ran across. I love it. It says, shine on. And I just like the title and how they did it. Because what I know to be true is that if you will take the time and shift your focus to the presence and power of spirit, you will become more loving. You will become more wise and powerful. If you will allow your focus to shift, you will begin to see the light shine as you. We don't need anybody else to do that for us. We got the instructions. Love spirit, the spirit of God, with all your heart, and all your mind, and all your understanding, and all your will. All of you, uh, Daniel Namat sings a song, and I couldn't get it in the form I wanted to, but he sings a song, Take All of Me and Use All of Me for Good. Would you be willing to give up your life and allow it to be used for good. The Daily Word today said, I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. Are you praying, thy will be done? Are you praying, I'm right, I want it my way? We can all call it forth. We can call forth the light. We can see the light. We can be the light. But it's a matter of shifting our focus. I don't know who said it first or why, what even situation they were in, but that question comes up for me at this time. Would you rather be right or happy? It's a simple choice. It is a simple choice. And if you have your Lenten books and you're letting go, this week you'll get a chance to let go of judgment of others. And one of the first persons that you should let go of judgment about is yourself. Not saying that we won't have some difficulties in life. They come up. Situations come up and difficulties <laughs> They can be in your face. But often our best lessons come from our ability to allow God's presence to work through us to resolve the situation. And we grow. 
some of the biggest challenges of my life I managed to live through and I feel I've grown. But we've got to remember who we are. There's a lot of focus on the presence and power of God. I think we know that. But do we also know that that presence and that power is within us, expressing as who we are, if we will only allow it, if we can let go of the trust we have in what the world says and allow God to speak right through us. Who we are is we are one with that presence. Now, Jesus, you called the Christ. Like I said, I did think it was his last name. But I'm glad that I found out differently. It's not his last name, but it is his nature. And it is your nature. Because when that presence and power of God is operating through you, it expresses as love. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Who knows what the proper time is? I'm not sure. But I do know Arguing and demanding that people shift their opinion to match yours, that won't be the proper time. If we let go and allow God present and power to move through our lives as our lives, we can expect more love, Hmm. more good, more peace. It opens us to an experience of a higher awareness. And just like the law works, what do you put out, you get back. But you don't know. That's why they're talking about at the proper time we will reap. We always reap what we sow, no matter what it is. So it's up to you how your life's going to be. That Christ presence is the part of you that is expressing when you have cleared away when you have cleared away the doubt and the fear and the worry and all of those shields, you can call them shields, you can call them shadows, when they're cleared away because you know that that presence is within you and you want it to operate fully as you, That's why the name of this, Christ in you, your hope of glory. It's already there. It's already in you. We are fully human. And at the same time, fully divine. It's you know, I hear the word transformation all the time. All, there are many coaches who will help you transform your life. The real transformation happens when you allow the presence and power of spirit to move in and through you. When you recognize that the Christ is within you, not something out there that you have to get and not 
something you have to do. It's a being. We spend more time on our humanity, what we have to wear and how much money we have and how pretty our house is. You know, all that's going to fade away in a little bit of time. But you are fully divine. And if you will allow it, that presence that is within you will express as your life as love, peace, all 12 of those powers, your life, guidance, always available. And the hardest thing about it is that you must yield control. And many of us fight for that control. I will control my life. You may. And you get what you get. But if you let go and allow God to be God in you and as you, it just clears your mind, the blocks, the anger and hatred that may be in you about a situation, about a person, about something way in the past. Do you know that can be cleared in moments? The one presence and one power is never an absence. It's just a matter of you making that choice. Guide me. Show me the way. You have two tools. I'm going to close with those two tools. One of them, the Daily Word talked about. Oh, I found that too. Okay, the Daily Word talked about prayer. Daily word up here. There it is. I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. As I pray, I immerse myself within the silence. I can be still and know. So in that point, you've opened your mind and heart in prayer, and you have then traveled into the silence where spirit can nurture you. Sounds easy, but the whole being still and knowing that God is right within you is not the easiest. It takes practice. I invite you to develop your practice, if you don't already have one, at least once a day. It doesn't have to be any formal place. You can walk in the woods. You can sit by a tree. You can sit in your bathroom, in your bathtub. It's not where, because that presence is already with you. But it's how you come, letting go, letting go of all the boundaries and all the stuff you think you know and th being right and being, become fearless, become as a child, become loving. I ran across this and I'm going to close with this prayer because I just, it just seemed like a prayer to me. And it's called The Quiet Place. I came to this quiet place and found you waiting for me, God. I hadn't heard you call. I had no seeming need at all. But I just felt guided to be still. And here you are. My heart is open to your will. Speak to me, God. For I am listening within myself. I hear you in my mind, a kind of moving as in the quiet of a forest. Pleasant sounds and whispering to my heart. 
in this place apart, sweet spirit, I thank you for the peace I feel, the sure knowing that you are here and real and that we are one in this quiet place. When you are in their quiet place, and I am in my quiet place, not only are we one with God, but we are one with one another. And so I say to you, namaste. And speaking of Easter, uh, our Easter egg hunt is happening March 31st. It is totally free to attend, and we'd like to invite you to spread the word. It is open to the public, and it is a tradition here that is always a lot of fun. And we are, of course, looking for continued donations to our food pantry. You don't have to bring them into the building. You can simply pull up in front of our box out front, place the items there, and know that they will be blessing many of our neighbors. Our Friends of Unity are meeting on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock, an opportunity for fellowship and also just to do some, some good work for the church around here, and always a fun time. Our chaplains are here today. Uh, Jay and I are here, Carolyn as well. If you have a need for prayer, we would love to support you in those requests, and we're available after the service. Also, uh, our lease is inviting us to a presentation, a workshop, by Reverend Paul Hasselbeck. You may know that name. He's one of our grandfathers of unity, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I mean, he's really uh, contributed so much to the movement. That's going to be on March 24th. <clears throat> He'll be speaking at the Unity Center of Tulsa uh, at 11 that morning and then doing a workshop that afternoon. So sounds like a possible road trip to me. Thank you, Arlise, for sharing that. And finally, our Operation SOAR committee is having its final meeting uh, today after the service. And SOAR stands for Seeing Our Abundance Rising. You have a team of dedicated volunteers who have been brainstorming and actually doing a lot of work and <laughs> managing some tasks to help us increase our prosperity flow so that we can increase our giving back to the community and blessing others. If you have any feedback for us, any ideas you'd like us to consider, please stop by our meeting and share those. We will be preparing a final report for the board meeting on Tuesday. So we'd love to hear your ideas as well. And at this time, we will just bless the kids, the kids that are here physically, but also our inner child as well, if you'd join me in our blessing. Children, you are a perfect child of God, and God and I love you just the way you are. I love the doodles on that graphic. <laughs> and let us now circle uh, together for our peace song and our prayer of protection.
Thank you.